these these calendars. All the ladies that had something to do with these calendars, please stand up. Those calendars are kick ass. And if you haven't seen them, it really shows what unity is all about. It really shows what being part of the union is all about. And I commend these ladies for doing all the hard work they're doing, whether they're uh, cleaning up the river, cleaning up the river, or or raising money for toys, and they do a hell of a job. And uh, they are they are really an inspiration to a lot of us. So, obviously, I, I want to talk to you about right to work. Right to work. It's it's been such a draw right now at the Capitol, amongst a whole bunch of other political stuff right now. I got to tell you, you know, when I when I started this session, I didn't have any gray hair. You know, <laughs> Trevor, Trevor, I think had zero, and Tom had hair. <laughs> so it's it's been a very difficult session this year. Uh, it's not only right to work. There's just a vast array of political issues right now that we're dealing with at the Capitol. And so many, so many of, ha of them have to do with attacking workers. When you see those signs that says stop the war on workers, I kid you not, there is a serious war on workers out there. And there's a serious war on women right now, that women workers. I mean, there's actually a piece of legislation that they want to pass, these anti-union legislators, that does away demanding equal pay for, for women in the workplace. Unbelievable. But that's what's happening. That's the idiocracy of the, of the state legislature right now. But right to work is something that goes against the core principles of being union. There's 23 other states right now that currently have right to work. And those states all make approximately $5,500 less on the average than we do in, in here in Minnesota. Now you're going to hear a lot of stuff from the, from the other side, the proponents of right to work. It's going to create jobs. It's going to it's going to make it business friendly for the people of, for the people of Minnesota that want to start businesses. It's going to make it business friendly to be able to attract business to come to Minnesota. It's all bull. The reality is is the last state that passed right to work aside Indiana just recently was Oklahoma in 2001. They have 30 percent of the manu manufacturing jobs now than they did then. There is no specific proof that anybody is able to substantiate that it brought jobs to Oklahoma. To the contrary, they, they can see real wages went down in the state of Oklahoma due to right to work. This is how it works. Well, first of all, let me read you what the, the, the proposed constitutional amendment would do. Number one, it's a misnomer. Right to work. I mean, honestly, everybody should have the right to work. They label it, they mislabel it from the get-go because they want to confuse the hell out of everybody. If you're union, you're going to say, yeah, I want, I want to have the right to work. If you're non-union, yeah, I want to have the right to work too. Everybody thinks they have the right to work. But the reality is, is that doesn't give you any rights to work. To the contrary, it gives you a right to work for less. Right to hurt is what, it, what we like to call it. And I'll, I'll tell you why it's so confusing for people. I think uh, in the earlier meeting or today, just a little bit ago, something was mentioned about a poll that was done to you with union members across the state. And they read this first sentence of this proposed amendment to union members. And 69, 70% of them said, I like it. it. The law should state that. And the constitutional amendment would say, shall the Minnesota Constitution be amended to guarantee all citizens the individual freedom to decide to join or not join a labor union. Who can argue with that? Everybody should have the right to join or not to join a union. You already do. When you organize into a labor union, you have a choice, you have a vote. You already have that choice. Furthermore, if you, are, if you go to work at a, a shop that has a union, you have a right to be non-union under federal and state law. You don't have to be a member of the Teamsters Union. But you're damn right you're going to pay for the services. You're going to pay to negotiate that contract. You're going to pay to administer that contract. You're going to pay for the representation of that contract. And that's what they want to get away with. 
They want to create this free riding society, and that's what right to work will create. And this is this is one of the worst things about it. Is that everybody? I, I worked at a UPS, 1981, October 15, 1981. I started working at UPS, and I'm still on leave there. Everybody in this room knows somebody that you work with that if they had a choice, they wouldn't pay dues. Raise your hands. Everybody, right? Pretty much everybody has one of those guys or girls. The reality is, is under right to work, they wouldn't have to pay a dime. Yet they'd still get same wages as you, same medical benefits as you, same vacation, sick days, whatever you guys get, as you do. And here's the kicker. If they got terminated or they're reprimanded, these guys got to represent them by law. <laughs> And furthermore, in the event that they feel that they weren't represented to the fullest, they can actually sue your union when they don't play, pay a damn red cent for it. Does that sound fair? This is what these, these legislators are trying to do. And i got to tell you, I never like to use, and I've said this to you guys many a times, I never like to use Democrat or Republican. But the reality is, is there's not one Democrat that is in favor of this bill. Not one, both in the Senate and in the House. In the Senate, we have two to three Republicans that have come our way on this issue. In the House, on the other hand, we have 15 Republicans that are, are supporting us on this issue. So right now, they, they don't have the votes. Not in, they do have them in the Senate, but we don't believe they have the votes in the House. But the battle isn't over. And the reason we can't let this go forward is that if it passes in the Senate, the pressure on those House members is going to be so deep, so hard, that some of them may start to crumble. We need six. We can easily lose nine like that. And we can't take that chance. So there's a lot of uh, articles right now in the newspaper and in the news stating that Right to work is, in essence, on standstill. Nothing's going to happen. They don't have the votes. Bullshit. we got to continue to operate as this thing's going to go right down our throat. Because the minute we let our guard down with these anti-union legislators, they're going to shove it right down our throat, and we won't even see it coming. So this issue is really, it, it's a real simple issue. And the way it breaks down our ability to negotiate wages is, is this way. If UPS, we all know how tough it is to squeeze a dime out of these guys. They've got ankles down to their pockets, but I tell you, it's really hard to get it out of them. And every single one of you know that. Um, the reality is, is when you go into negotiations, they're never easy. But if a company like UPS knew that 30% of your union, or you, 30% of your fellow workers were not part of the union, Guess what they know? That threat of a strike kind of goes down the tube. They know 30% of your co-workers are going to cross that picket line the day you go on strike. And so the threat of the strike doesn't have the emphasis that it has or the panic that it has by threatening it. So when it gets to be 40% or 50% of the workforce, you're dead. And you have no ability to get wages increased. You have no ability to get benefits increased, and, and you're shot down. And that's why wages continue to fall in those right to work for less states. There's a, there's a, a lot of statistics out there that you're going to be hearing, but uh, in essence, this is what right to work is. Right to work makes it illegal for any group of employees to negotiate an agreement with their employer that requires everyone who benefits from a union contract to pay their share of the cost of administering that contract. That's specifically what the law would state. Now here's the real statistics on right to work. In right to work states, people earn $5,538 less than Minnesotans per year. Roughly $106 a week. Anybody here willing to take a $106 a week cut? No. The median household income in states with this law is $6,100 less than in Minnesota. In states with this law, workers are less likely to have job-based health insurance. In states with this law, workers are less likely to be insured. 
Poverty rates are higher in states with this law, and states with this law spend on average $2,671 less per pupil on education. People are making less money, there's going to be less taxable income, which is less money for, for students in schools. This is the wild one though. The rate on workplace debts is 52.9% higher in states with this law. This is according to the, to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This, is, this isn't no bull. This, this is real. That's the reality of what's going on with right to work states. So you're going to hear more about this issue within these next couple weeks. It's going to heat up. We need you to turn on the heat too. We need you to do everything you can in your power to make sure you protect your union. I say it's your union because I go up to that Capitol, I know all, my, all our membership is right behind me, but you gotta be 100% behind us because we can't do this battle alone. It takes everybody in this union to accomplish this. You've got to pick up the phone, you've got to call your legislator and tell him or her, I don't care if they're Democrat or Republican, they have to vote against right to work to save the unions and to save the middle class. Plain and simple. You should write them a letter. Let them know how dropping your wages and dropping your ability to negotiate collectively good contracts would hurt you and your family. You've got to get your family to do the same. You've got to get your neighbors, your, your friends, whoever you can. This is a big issue. And I can't stress it enough to you guys, this is the biggest issue we've ever faced in the state of Minnesota when it comes to labor and unions. If we don't do something to fight back and throw that right hook at these, these politicians, we're going to be another Wisconsin. Because if they roll this through us, they're going to roll over us the next thing on something else. Next thing might be overtime. Next, time, next thing might be comp time. Shoving comp time to you instead of overtime. Next thing may be safety. You know, we're, we're sitting here fighting a process to, to heat the damn building, for Christ's sake. You know, what's the next thing? And that's what the strong union here. Imagine if we didn't have strong unions here. So we've got to fight back. We've got to come at them just as hard as they're coming at us. We've got to come at them. Now, how many of you are signed up on this Teamsters True Squad? Stand up, brother. Did you get your, your text message the other day? I gave him my email. All right. Now, if you sign up for the Truth Squad, this is what we hope to do. Everything's pretty fluid at the Capitol right now. They're going to give us little, very little notice as to when the next hearing on this right to work issue is. We want to have the ability to get a hold of you in a quick manner. For instance, last year, last week, they let us know on Friday, the, the week before, on Friday evening that the hearing was going to take place on Monday. Number one, we couldn't call you to ask you to call your legislator because the hearing was going to be 8 o'clock in the morning on Monday. You wouldn't have been able to get a hold of your legislator. Number two, they knew that we, had a, we would have a hard time rounding up the, the, our, our members for a Monday 8 o'clock morning meeting. So they're going to do that again. They're going to give us very little notice. But one thing they didn't imagine they couldn't have imagined that we'd be ready for this to a certain extent. We sent out over 600 text messages to our members that signed up for the True Squad. And if you have a phone, raise your hand if you have a phone that takes that accepts uh, text messaging. Virtually everybody. Everybody on the True Squad received a text message telling them who their legislator was, right to work was up on, on the House, on the Senate floor, to call their legislator, make sure that they, they uh, told them to vote no on right to work, included their name and their phone number. That's about as quick as you can get it. But that's as quick as we need you to react to this. And that's probably the most, most powerful way that you can influence your legislator is by calling them. During the day, whatever you're doing, you, everybody takes a break, everybody gets a lunch. Take three minutes to call to save your job. Save our, I don't want to say save your job, but save our ability to negotiate good wages for you. It's a quick thing to do. You guys, uh, we have forms here.